<laughs> Welcome back. As always, I'm Calvin Statue Fanatic here with another review. And today we have XM Studios Premium Collectible, The Witchblade in the house. I've been waiting for this figure for quite some time and I am super excited to finally get this piece in my hand. If you've seen my first video, you know it was a review of The Darkness, which is my all-time favorite XM statue. I know XM has produced some amazing pieces like The Ghost Rider, Magneto, Venom, and Cable, but for me, The Darkness is still the most ambitious statue they've produced and my all-time absolute favorite. The Witchblade is the second statue in the Top Cow series, and they've also announced Magdalene, which is the third in the series, and it's inconceivable that they could do these three statues and not do the Angelus. So I'm super excited to see what that statue looks like once they reveal it. The Witchblade was an ongoing monthly comic series by Top Cow Productions that ran from November 1995 to October 2015, spanning 185 issues. The Witchblade has appeared in nearly 500 different comic issues, including appearances with the Justice League, Wolverine, The Civil Surfer, Tomb Raider, Red Sonja, Lady Death, Ghost Rider, Aliens, Predator, Vampirella, Medieval Spawn, and many other popular characters. The list is pretty long. The Witchblade has also been the subject of a TV series and anime series. Sarah Pizzini, a New York City police detective, is the current and most popular wielder of the Witchblade. And I say current wielder because there have been multiple wielders of the Witchblade throughout history. So, what is the Witchblade exactly? A lot of you may think that the Witchblade is the character that you see here, but this is actually the wielder of the Witchblade, Sarah Pizzini. The Witchblade is one of 13 supernatural artifacts in the Top Cow universe and is the offspring of the Darkness and the Angelus. The Darkness and the Angelus are two opposing forces which typically represent darkness and light, chaos and order, you know, the yin and yang, that type of thing. Throughout eternity, they have been at war with each other. So in order to restore balance to the universe of the cosmos, if you would, during the time of a truce between the two supernatural forces, the Darkness and Angelus consummated their relationship and decided to have an offspring, which is the Witchblade artifact. In other words, they had angry sex. This offspring was to restore balance to the universe. The Witchblade artifact typically seeks a female host. It usually takes the form of metal gauntlet, but it can also allow the wielder to form various weapons reminiscent of how Green Lantern forms his weapons. The Witchblade enables his host to perform superhuman feats as well as heal its host. It can also form full body armor to protect its host as well, much like the Venom symbiote. And it can sense danger, much like Spider-Man's spidey senses. Sarah Pizzini's first appearance was in Side Blade Shy No. 1. However, the story of her acquiring the Witchblade with his current mythos and storyline actually occurred in Witchblade No. 1. All of the characters, the Witchblade, the Darkness, the Angelus, and Magdalene have very, very interesting background stories. I would encourage you to check out the comic book and I'll also put a few links in the show notes so that you can check out some more in-depth reviews of the actual comic characters and how they fit into the Top Cow universe. But now, let's get started by taking a closer look at the statue. The statue stands approximately 22 and a half inches tall from the base to the top of her hair. It's approximately 22 inches wide if you display her with the axe and 11 and a half inches if you display her with the arm without the axe. She weighs about 17 and a half pounds. I was surprised when I got the box. This is my seventh XM piece, so I was accustomed to really large boxes from XM Studio. However, this was in a much smaller box, yet it still was packaged perfectly and arrived in perfect condition. I think XM has pretty much mastered the art of engineering the boxing and packaging of their pieces in order to ship them so they arrive in pristine condition. So starting with the portrait of this piece, she comes with two portraits. My favorite is this one, where the energy from what is happening seems to be flowing through her hair. The second portrait is also nice. To me, that portrait looks a lot like 
She knows that her opponent has no chance in hell of winning this battle, and she's taking pleasure in knowing her enemy has no idea what's about to hit him. The detail in the paint application on her face is really nice, as well as the sculpt and the detail in her hair on both portraits are really awesome. Her body is sort of void of any type of clothing as the witch blade has begun to envelop her body as a protective armor of some sort. The detail in the armor is incredible. The paint job is flawless. In this sculpt, the witch blade is taking the form of the familiar gauntlet as well as forming a massive weapon in the form of an ax. She also comes with two left arms, one with the weapon and the other without. I like the one with the weapon. In my opinion, it makes her look like even more of a badass. This is what she looks like with the arm without the weapon in the second portrait. You can see elements of the witch blade swelling and swirling up around her as it begins to empower her. I love how dynamic this looks. It almost looks like a panel right from the comic book. The gauntlet has this brushed metal appearance as well as the rest of the armor around her body. As you look around the entire statue, you can see some amazing shading and paint application meticulously applied on every area of the armor and gauntlet. Each of the gemstones in the armor are extremely bright and vivid. They look pretty awesome. Her pose is one of focus and determination. It looks as if she is completely transfixed and has all the power of the Witchblade completely under her control. She's transformed into this lethal weapon behind the disguise of a distractingly beautiful and seductive gaze. The base of this piece is another example of how Exxon makes the base as much of a character in the piece as the figure itself, and yet not take away from the figure. The base is exploding with the energy of the Witchblade. You can see the energy building from the base as it starts to grow and form the armor around her body. The base is also beautifully sculpted, and I love the way the witch blade swirls around her right leg all the way up to her arm where it appears to have just formed the gauntlet on her arm. You can also see this skull that's also part of the base, and her right foot is resting on the skull. The detail and the paint application throughout the base is amazing. The base and the statue are perfectly balanced and solid. I am really pleased with this statue and I think it came out looking just like the prototype in my opinion, which has also become in many cases, and in my opinion as well, a trademark of XM Studios. Those are my thoughts and impressions of the Witchblade Premium Collectible from XM Studios. I'm really excited to see what they continue to do with this line. There are 13 artifacts in the Top Cow universe. The Darkness and the Witchblade are only two, so they have a lot of source material to work with. So, my fellow collectors, I would love to hear your thoughts about this piece and about the line, so feel free to subscribe, leave comments, like, you name it. Uh, I've also included XM's official trailer of this piece. Um, they tend to make these mini trailers of the statues that they release. It's pretty cool, so check that out. So, until next time, peace, take care.